All right, if you want a party, you shall have a party. I'll talk to Frank Crowley about it. What will you wear? I never dress up. It's the rule of the house. The host doesn't wear fancy dress. Oh, that's not fair. Ah, the rule of the house. Well, in that case, I shall keep my costume a secret. Miss Caroline de Winter. How do you do, Mr. de Winter? Go and change. It doesn't matter what you put on. Quickly, before anybody gets here. Quickly! Well, the dress, the picture you copied. Rebecca did the same at the last ball. You made me wear that dress last night, didn't you? I should never have thought of it, but for you. There must be a ship gone ashore in the bay. We sent a diver down to inspect the damage. While he was down there, he came across the hull of a small sailing boat. There was a body on the cabin floor. Oh, my God. It's Rebecca's body lying on the cabin floor. I killed her. identify her body. There's everything they need in that cabin. The shoes, the clothes she had, the rings on her fingers. They'll identify her body. And then they'll remember the other one, the woman they buried last year. What are you going to do? What are you going to say? Does anyone know what happened? No one but you and me. You sure Frank doesn't know? How could he? There was no one there but myself. It was dark. I love you. I love you. Will you believe me now? Yes, I believe you. I love you so much. So much. I thought I'd go mad. There was no one I could tell. You could have told me. You seemed so bored, so unhappy. I thought you still loved Rebecca. Loved her. I hated her. Hated her. Oh, what can I tell you? How can I explain Rebecca? For her, True happiness was only to be found in the unhappiness of others, in possession, in destruction. We were on holiday in Monte Carlo when she made her bargain with me. We went for a drive up into the hills. Do you remember that drive? Well, we stood there together on the edge of that precipice, looking out of the sunset. I remember her. Her black hair was blowing in the wind. She told me everything about herself. She was smiling as she told me. I'll be discreet, she said. 
I'll take a flat in London, nobody will ever know. And I'll make your precious Manderley the most beautiful house in all the country. We stood there on the edge of that precipice within six feet of death. Oh, I almost killed her then. Instead, I agreed. Why? Because. I suppose I was afraid of scandal, afraid of all those whispered rumors. I, I thought about Manderley too much. I put Manderley first before anything else. And it does not prosper, that sort of love. She kept her side of the bargain. It was her taste, her skill that made Manderley the thing it is today. The china, the tapestries, the gardens, the shrubs, even Happy Valley. None of that existed when my father was alive. That's all Rebecca. One day she'd be here entertaining all graciousness and smiles and the next back to London. And so we live. Month after month, year after year. Then she began to go careless. She began to ask her friends down here. There was one man, well, one man in particular, a man called Favell. Jack Favell? Yes. Do you know him? I met him. He came here when you were away to see Mrs. Danvers. But why didn't you tell me? He asked me not to. That's no reason. I thought it'd remind you of Rebecca. Oh, as if I needed reminding. Well, he spent a lot of time down here when, when she was alive. She'd tell the servants that she was going to sail and wouldn't be back until the morning, and then she'd spend the night with him in that cottage by the bay. Then one day, one morning, I lost my temper. I, I told her that if I found him here again, I'd kill him. She didn't even reply. She just ignored me. Things drifted on. Nothing much happened. And then... I'd been having dinner with Frank Crawley. Rebecca had gone to London. I left Frank's at about half past ten. Her gloves and scarf were on a chair in the hall. She'd come back. I couldn't imagine why. I went upstairs. She wasn't there. I guessed that she'd gone down to the cottage. I presumed Jack Favell had gone with her. Oh, I felt I couldn't stand it any longer. I took the gun. Just to frighten me, I took the gun and slipped out into the garden. The servants didn't know that I'd come back at all. I made my way down through the woods to the cottage. Rebecca was alone. I started shouting at her. I told her that I'd had enough, that it was the end. She got up. She got up and stretched herself, her arms above her. You're right, Max, she said. She was smiling. This time I turned over a new leaf, found a new interest in life. A child, perhaps. A son. An heir to your precious mantle. And nobody, nobody in the world could ever prove that it wasn't yours. I'll be the perfect mother, just as I've been the perfect wife. She turned round to face me, laughing. I fired at her heart. She didn't fall at once. She just stood there, looking at me, that slow smile on her face. Her eyes wide open. I carried her down to the boat. It must have been almost midnight. There was no moon. The wind was squally from the west. I carried her down to the cabin and left her there. I managed to get the boat out into the bay beyond the beacon. The wind blew down from the headland like a funnel. I opened the sea cocks. Water began to come in. I had a spike with me, and I drove it into the bottom boards. One plank split right across. 
I took out the spike and drove it into another plank. Water came up over my feet. I left Rebecca lying there. I closed the cabin door. I climbed into the dinghy, pulled away and watched. The boat was sinking by the head. The jib was shaking and cracking like a whip. Suddenly she heeled right over and the mast split right down the center. The boat wasn't there anymore. I came back to the house. As I was undressing, Mrs. Danvers knocked at the door. I, I think she was worried about Rebecca. I told her to go back to bed. That's all. They can't prove anything against you. Not yet. No one knows but us. They may find out. How? By asking questions. What questions? Who's going to ask questions? The coroner for a start. There's bound to be an inquest. And on the 23rd of that month, you went to Edgecombe to examine the body of a woman which you were able to identify without hesitation as being that of your late wife, Rebecca de Winter. How do you explain that? I must have been mistaken. The body was already far gone in decomposition. It could have been almost anyone, man or woman. I suppose I, I went there expecting it to be my wife's body. I was mistaken. Yes. Yes, that seems to be quite understandable. Thank you, Mr. De Winter. Uh, it is suggested that at the moment Mrs. De Winter went below um, for a quit, perhaps. A violent gust of wind came down from the headland into the cove. Now, would that, in your expert opinion, have been sufficient to capsize the boat? No, sir, I don't think it would. Um, well, I'm afraid that is what must have happened. I don't think Mr. De Winter or any of us suggests that your workmanship was to blame for the accident at all. You fitted the boat out at the start of the season. You reported her sound and seaworthy. That's all I want to know. Excuse me, sir, but there's more to it than that. And if you'll allow me, I'd like to make a further statement. Oh, very well, go on. It's like this, sir. After the accident, some people said that I'd let Mrs. De Winter start the season in a leaky, rotten boat. I lost two or three orders because of it. So when they found the boat and brought it to the surface, I asked Captain Searle if I could examine her. I wanted to satisfy myself that I'd done a good job of work. And were you satisfied? Indeed I was, sir. There was nothing wrong with that boat as regards the work I did to her. She'd sunk on sandy bottom, sir. I asked a diver about that and he told me so. She'd not touched the ridge at all. She was lying on sand and there wasn't the mark of a rock on her. Is that all you want to say? No, sir, it's not. What I want to know is this. Who drove the holes in her planking? Rocks didn't do it. The nearest rock was five feet away. Besides, they weren't the sort of marks made by a rock. They was holes, done with a spike. Why, uh, what do you mean? Where were these holes? There was three of them all together, sir. One right forward by a chain locker on the starboard side below the waterline. The other two close together amidships, underneath her floorboards in the bottom. And the sea cocks had been turned on as well. I don't understand that. Uh, wouldn't it be very dangerous to leave the sea cocks open? Well, yes, sir, it would. With those holes in her planking and the sea cocks not closed, it wouldn't take long for a small boat like her to sink. Not much more than ten minutes. Well, what are you suggesting, Mr. Tab? my opinion.